So uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about, uh, I guess, the first question I had that I, that I thought was interesting was, uh, was my buddy Miguel, uh, and we talked about this uh, between ourselves, but I thought this was such a great question. I kind of wanted to share some insight with everybody, but his question was uh, things that I wish I had hadn't hadn't done uh, coming up in my career my uh, um, in my career as a as a software engineer software developer and for those of you who don't know um, yeah my day job is actually in the tech industry and I've been in the tech industry for let's see I started in 1995 literally the day I graduated high school so I had a job building networks um, and so, yeah, so I've been in, in, involved in the tech industry in some way, shape or form for, yeah, for about 20, what is that? What does that make it? That makes it 24, 25 years, 25 years. Yeah. So, and a, a big chunk of that, I mean, I'd say the last, let's see, it is 2021. 20, so I'd say the last 19 years has been as a, as a software, as either as a software developer or as adjacent to software development. And uh, yeah, a lot of things, and I've learned a lot of things. I've done a lot of cool things, done a lot of stupid things. Um, nothing career killing, thank God. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's an interesting question. Things I wish I had done and hadn't done. And I would say I'm actually going to spin that around and say, here are the things that I think you should do and, <laughs> you know, don't do, do learn from my mistakes. Right. Um, and some of these things I actually did. And the cool thing about this is I think this works for most careers. Um, I mean, ultimately it does kind of depend on how much room you have to maneuver in what directions in, in your chosen field or career path. But, um, and, and I'll try and, I'll try and use examples that are, I guess are applicable to general I guess general jobbiness, for lack of a better term. Sorry, yeah, that was super eloquent. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I would say, all right, forget everything I just said. What I'm I, so let me just start by by telling you the things that I did that I think worked. Um, so now, if you're coming up, so say you're a younger person or you're at the beginning of a career path, and again, like I said, you have some room to maneuver, not just within the career path, but I mean, literally like in the world, like you're free to kind of travel, you're free to move around, you're free to kind of do your own thing. I would say the thing that I did best that really served me well was taking, taking interesting opportunities when they presented themselves and, you know, kind of not really, not really worrying about let's, let's say what, what I'll call short term. Uh, I don't even know what the, what I don't, I don't know what to say, but let me give you an example. I know, yeah. It, me, me. Uh, it's funny. I, I think I opened this by saying, yes, I'm really good at talking and here. I am not being good at talking. Um, so, so example. So when I was, when I was starting out in the tech industry, I moved around a lot. Um, and I, I feel like if I hadn't done that, I would not have had the opportunities or been able to take advantage of the opportunities that I did. Um, you know, being able to say, Hey, that there, there's an interesting job there. Oh, but it's in California. Okay. Well, I guess I'm moving to California. Oh, there's an interesting job. I guess I'm moving back to Seattle. Oh, I guess I'm moving to SoCal. Oh, I guess I'm moving to Portland. Um, I mean, I like traveling anyway, you know, I grew up traveling. So, but I, I think if you have, like I said, if you have that, that room to maneuver, take opportunities that you think are going to be interesting and beneficial to you even if it means having to make some life changes like that, because, you know, you're going to, you know, the experience is invaluable. You're going to meet new people. You're going to get the experience of maybe living in a different environment, which I'm kind of glad I did, you know, I mean, cause now, you know, moving around is not a big deal to me. I mean, I travel a lot for, well, back before the world went crazy and stupid, um, I was traveling a lot for my current job and it was just easy. You know, I'm, I, you know, it was very easy for me to travel and, you know, even if you don't end up in a position where you travel a lot, I think just being comfortable with that idea of moving around and making changes is, um, is good because I, th cause I think you develop some flexibility from that. And I think where else that kind of manifests is it was easy for me to, I guess, jump between disciplines. So, you know, I started out building networks, then I went to building hardware. And then from there, I went into working in the games industry and some of that was art, some of that was programming. And then I went into research and, you know, and interaction design and user research. And a lot of that was programming and working with people. And then I went into, went back into hardware, but it was hardware development. So, you know, I think if I hadn't, um, 
I, I think if I hadn't come up with, or if I hadn't come up initially in my career with that idea of move around, you know, maneuver, change positions, change, you know, change perspective, change vantage points, I think it might have been a little tougher for me to say, oh goodness, this is a, a position that's really interesting to me, but it's not, it's not quote unquote my area of expertise. So maybe I shouldn't do it. Instead, it was just like, oh, that's cool. Okay, well, yeah, it's a completely different skill set that I don't necessarily have all of the points for, but I think I could do, so let's just try it. And that ended up working out. I mean, you know, one of the cool things about the tech industry is there's a lot of on-the-job learning. And again, that, that might be a specific thing, you know, in your career field, you may not have that same, um, that same room to maneuver, but that actually kind of is a good place to jump off into another thing that I think really served me well uh, career-wise. And that was just kind of having my own interests outside of whatever I was working on at work. So, you know, I was, you know, I'm the kind of person who, yeah, I do my day job and then I'd go home and work on other projects, you know, work on side projects. So if there was a, a specific thing that I wanted to learn that wasn't maybe part of my, my, my kind of my daily tasks, but it was something that was, that I thought was cool. I would, you know, I'd, I'd research it myself, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, buy books or I'd read papers and I'd build my own projects. And, you know, I mean, I, th I think self-teaching is, is very powerful. You know, it's, I mean, A, you're going to stay, in, you know, I mean, obviously you're going to work on things that you're interested in. So you're going to be engaged and B, it's just at the end of the day, it's just another tool you're going to have in your toolbox. And you're going to be able to say, you know, when an opportunity, uh, when an opportunity that might come up that gives you, um, I'm sorry, when, an, when an opportunity comes up that you, that, that makes use of that skill set that you have now have because you spent the time on the side to actually develop, um, yeah, you'll be, you'll be ready for it versus again, versus having to say, Oh crap, I'm gonna have to pass up on that. And yeah, it, it means you're going to have to, you know, maybe prior reprioritize your time. I mean, so for example, I, um, I didn't have much of a social life coming up because that's a lot of what I was doing was, was all work related. But, um, you know, I kind of look at where I am now and sort of the freedom I have to kind of move around. Also the fact that, you know, I'm at a pretty high level, you know, I can, I can, I can work for pretty high level positions that command decent salaries. So I do okay in that respect. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the long game, right? You know, you, you know, you grind at the beginning and then you hopefully you enjoy the benefits. So, so those are the first two, I would say, you know, a, you know, B, you know, leave yourself free to maneuver and take a, take advantage of the opportunities. And, uh, number two do, you know, self-learn, you know, self-teach, you know, pursue things that are interesting to you that are, that are related. And do I have a third thing? Yeah, I'm gonna say that that dirty word that that, that uh, people don't like, but uh, I think is an essential skill. That that's network. And you know, the cool thing about where we are nowadays is that doesn't mean you have to go out to events and kind of schmooze and all that. I mean, join a forum. Um, you know, contribute to forum discussions. You know, post stuff on your social media. You know, I mean, I used to be really really big in Twitter, and honestly, I I got, I I would say I got a lot of opportunities, you know, do things like contribute to, you know, write mag, write, write reviews for software products for magazines or speak at, at events just because, just from posting things on Twitter, you know, like I'd post like, you know, video clips of a project I was working on or screenshots where I'd just post uh, some little interesting thing that I discovered while I was working on a project. And it's, it's really that simple. I mean, you, you know, and you can make the argument that, yeah, you don't get quite the reach anymore. Um, I, I, I'll admit, yeah, back at, back in the day, like Twitter was actually useful and wasn't a cesspool of hate, but, um, there's still channels out there. I mean, you know, jump jump on some of the alt platforms. I mean, you know, or or maybe use a platform that people aren't aren't really using for that stuff in you know in a creative way. I mean, you know, you know, take advantage of the fact that you can post videos and photos on Instagram, for example. Um, you know, start your own YouTube channel. I mean, that's huge. You know, that's the kind of thing that you know you might even be able to spin into a side hustle if if, if you're doing you know if you're if you're posting interesting content. So. Yeah. And of course, do go to events. And, you know, when you're at events, kind of like I said, with uh, point number one, just be, be open to be open to conversations, you know, talk to people, um, go to, you know, I mean, so for example, if you're a game developer, you go to GDC, but go to the go to the offsite events too. you know, meet people, meet people that are maybe outside of your field, talk to people that are maybe uh, in different industries or in or, or in different arms. And, you know, stay in touch because you never know like what that's going to turn into. So like I said, I know a lot of people think that networking and is, is kind of a, is a bad word, but I, I, again, I mean, 
I, I would probably not be where I am because of networking. I mean, I can, I can say that for a fact because I mean, the reason that I have the job I have right now is because I was posting things on a forum and I actually met a gentleman uh, who was a student at the time. And, you know, for, on that forum, we stayed in touch. And then when he started working for the company I'm at now, um, you know, I hit him up at one point because he posted something on his LinkedIn. And I said, hey, this sounds really interesting. Is this, do you know anything about this position? And, you know, he was able to kind of fill me in and help me, you know, help me kind of get, you know, get my interview and, you know, kind of shepherd me through the process. And here I am. So, you know, that's, that's just one of the ways that, you know, that um, networking pays off. I mean, it's the obvious one, of course, but, you know, if you don't do that, you're not going to have access to that. And, you know, and let's be honest, it's just, it's just, it's nice to like talk to people. It's cool to like share things. I mean, honestly, I would not be where I am in my career if I, if people hadn't just been willing to, to share information or, you know, like, you know, give me advice on my career or give me advice on how to just solve daily problems, you know, and being able to just reach out to people and say, Hey, I'm trying to write this tool that does this thing, or I need to solve this problem at work. You know, do you have any ideas? So, you know, give a little, get a little, you know how that goes. So I'd say those are the three things that, um, I'm glad I did. And I would definitely recommend doing, um, so, you know, so networking, you know, I just said networking, uh, work on your own projects, you know, self-teach, have your own interests, and then, you know, take opportunities as they come, especially if you think it's, op- if, if it's going to be beneficial to you and you're interested in it. Um, the flip to that is some things I wish I had done differently. I would say the only thing I wish I had done differently was actually an interesting corollary to kind of some of the stuff I just talked about. Um, so I actually did, I think take longer to make the jump out of the games industry than I should have because I knew for a couple jobs, like towards the end of my time in games, uh, you know, I had opportunities to get out of games and either go work in film or go work in hardware or go work in, you know, non-games but related fields. And I didn't do it because part of it was just a a confidence issue. I, I didn't know if I was, if I could do something that wasn't games. And the weird thing was, it wasn't even like ego investment. It wasn't even that I, I was like, oh no, I've been in games for so long. I, I don't want to get rid of all that. It was just, oh, I just don't think I'm good enough. Um, but that kind of really led to me sort of, let's just, let, let, let's say flaming out of the games industry. And I, I don't know if anybody who knows me from that time is listening to this, but um, when I, when I left the games industry, I, I I definitely wasn't graceful about it. You know, I mean, I kind of said some things that I probably shouldn't have said. Um, I was kind of a jerk to some people about just the whole industry. And so don't do that, Um, you know. uh, But yeah, I I guess, and and that's really something I think just carries over to life, right? Like don't, don't, and I know it's hard. I, I, I know this is, you know, I'm, I'm acting like it's, it's, it's an easy thing to do, but don't, especially if you know it's a, it's a situation that's not serving you and you have a good idea that there are, that the grass actually might be greener on the other side. I mean, take that jump when you can, you know, don't, don't put it off just because, you know, you're trying to be whatever, you know, in my case, you're scared and you like the security or, or the, the, the security you think you have. Right. And again, I know that's not always easy, but if, if it presents itself that way, you know, if, if I mean, if, if you're to, if, if you're to, I guess a crossroads where it's like, Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing this over here, but I have the opportunity to go do this other thing that I think I would like better you know, like I said, back to what I said at the, at the very beginning, do that. Even if it means like switching fields and switching arms and switching careers and, you know, and, and maybe even starting over a bit, because at least from my experience, you know, you're going to be, you're definitely going to be happier and you might actually find something that you're better at. You know, I mean, that was the other thing I realized was, you know, I'm as much as I can write software and I enjoy writing software. It's actually not the thing I'm best at. So, um, yeah. And, you know, and I, and I think, I think that's the big thing, you know, that's, that's, that's the only kind of regret I have slash mistake I think I made. Um, and yeah, so there you go. You know, don't, 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 don't wear out your welcome, I guess. Um,